Good morning y'all and welcome to your 44th chapter in your Java U7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll explain how to modify the second level cache model settings to improve the performance of applications that use the Java Persistence API. When calling entity data, it can be expensive to call it from the database every single time you want to retrieve data. In the name of performance, you can make it an option to store the entity you are calling the most in your cache making the speed of calling the data much faster by keeping the entity data local and avoiding expensive database calls. One problem that may happen when using second cache in an application, the underlying original data may, uh, may have changed while the value of the cache has not. The inconsistency is called a stale read, where the database has changed values, but the your cache um, data has not. Now to control whether entities may be cached. To specify that an entity may be cached, add the at cacheable annotation on top of your class at a class level. So to specify the cache mode settings to improve performance. To adjust the cache mode settings for a persistence unit, specify one of the cache mo modes as the value of the shared cache mode element in the persistence.xml de uh, development descriptor. Either you can put in all, none, enable selective, or disable selective, which we have over here, disable selective. So to set up the cache retrieval and store modes, you can further modify the behavior of the second level cache by setting the cache retrieval and store modes. You can either cache retrieve, or you can store your cache in modes. So when you use cache retrieval, you can use the default use, which um, Basically, data will be retrieved from the second level cache if available. If not, it will then d directly um, get it from the database. You can then use a bypass, which is the second level cache is not accessed and is bypassed. Then there are store modes. So cache store modes use the use uh, as a default, which will keep the second level cache as it is, even when the database is accessed which means that even when this database is accessed, your cache will have the same amount of data and the same will be the case for bypass. This data will be the same. Now, if you set refresh, when the database is read, the cache changes to the updated database, which then changes up your entity, uh, your, um, like your, what's it? Um, your second level cache, and this will get rid of the stale read problem. Now, how do we set the cache retrieval and store mode? Um, this is how you would set the cache retrieval and store mode. And this is exactly what it would look like. You would get an entity manager object. You would then set a map uh, props object and then you create a new hash map and then use that props object to get the retrieve mode and then set your mode, which in this case would be bypass and then create a, uh, for example, person primary key and then find the person using the primary key and then using the props over here. And that's it. That's all there is about using the second level cache in JPA applications. I hope you understood how we can modify the second level cache mode settings to improve the performance of applications that use the Java Persistence API. And in the next chapter, we'll be getting into the messaging services, specifically JMS, Java Messaging Service. We'll be talking about the concepts and examples later on. Until then, I will see you in the next video.